is Kevin Hardegree Ullman, and I am a graduate student in the Department of Physics and Astronomy at the University of Toledo in Toledo, Ohio. Tonight I'm observing at the 3.5 meter wind telescope up on Kitt Peak. I'm Amy Robertson and I'm the observing assistant here at the Wind Telescope. So my job in a nutshell is that I drive the telescope. I make sure that the telescope doesn't run itself into the ground. Uh, I keep it tracking and I keep it in focus. Um, I interact with the observers. It's probably one of my favorite parts is learning about the science that people are doing here and getting to know the astronomers that, that pass through here. was to use the 3.5 meter wind telescope to study extrasolar planets or the stars that host them. Since my project is to observe red dwarfs and constrain their properties so that we can better study planets around red dwarfs, um, wind is a perfect telescope for me. Wynn has multiple instruments, but I'm specifically using Hydra, which is a multi-object spectrograph. That means that I can observe many stars at the same time. Since the 1990s, when we first discovered extrasolar planets, we've now discovered thousands of them orbiting other stars. Our ultimate goal is to find another Earth-like planet. So we want to find a planet that doesn't have temperatures that the water is always solid, like ice. And we also don't want a planet in which all of the water is evaporated in clouds. So we want to have a nice temperature where liquid water to, to exist. So somewhere between zero and 100 Celsius. When we search for extrasolar planets, the most common method is the transit method. We look at a star and we monitor it for hours and hours in the hopes of a planet going in and blocking some of its light. In 2009, the Kepler Space Telescope was launched. When liftoff of the Delta II rocket with Kepler on a search for planets in some way building. like our own. Our Kepler stared at the same field on the sky for four years straight, and they were just searching for planets that transit in front of their host star. With Kepler, we have discovered thousands of extrasolar planets, but in order to know any information about the planet, we also need to know information about their host stars. My research specifically focuses on figuring out the properties of red dwarf stars. Red dwarfs are stars that are much smaller than the sun, probably about half of the size, and they're much cooler than the sun, a few thousand degrees cooler than the sun. Since a red dwarf star is much smaller and much cooler than our own sun, that means a planet that could host water would be much closer to the star. So a planet around the habitable zone of a sun-like star takes roughly one year to orbit. A planet around a red dwarf star takes much less time, a few weeks to a few months. So if we're going to search for planets, we are much more likely to find a transiting planet around a red dwarf star, uh, especially planets that are in their habitable zone.
Okay. Six. Arg. <laughs> <laughs>